and welcome mindsetters to this session of grade 11 life science learn extra i'm ty and i'm here with lou who's going to be taking us to their session <laughs> what's happening today lou oh nothing much we are going to modification of body plans okay, so uh okay. let's take it away i think all right so while lou makes his way across the board <laughs> mindsetters you know the drill by now make sure you get on the page <coughs> chat to me let me know what you guys are thinking if you're lost anywhere if you need help post 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 and let me know what you guys are thinking because if you don't and just keep quiet, that doesn't help anyone. So make sure you post on the page because you don't know. There's no such thing as a silly question, so your question could help someone else. So I'm going to stress again. <laughs> Get on the page and chat to us. Let us know what you're thinking. But on that note, this is where I hand over to Lou. Lou, take it away. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Well, let's first start off. Body plans. If you remember, we've gone through all the body plans. If you've been watching every week, which I know I'm sure you have. So we've gone through where it's uh, a single cell right in the beginning. We didn't go through it, but it was very simple. Then we went through to diploblastic, and then we went through to triploblastic. And you started hearing words like uh, coelom or coelomates, and you had a look at through guts and all of those type of things, right? So we've gone through it quite nicely. Hopefully you can remember. Now, the next thing we're actually doing is called Body plan modification. Now, body plan modification is how things changed according to the environment. It's, an, it's a very nice way of, look, of, of, of looking at it, actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off. It's uh, modification, okay? body plan modification. We're going to look at a couple of definitions. Firstly, first thing we're going to have a look at, all these things normally happen in in your ver ver vertebral limbs, okay? It's all the limbs of, the, of, the, of these ver vertebrae. So um, your arms, your legs, things like that. Yes, we do get the insects and we do get flowers and all of that, but we'll come into it slowly but surely, okay? So I'm going to get my pen ready here because it's always nice to get a pen as we're going along. So firstly, as I said, the structure of the of vertebral limbs, okay? So it's your arms and all of that, okay? The adaptation and function of the specific things, that is the point of this whole thing, right? We're having a look how it actually adapts and how, why it changes so that it, it can survive. Because mostly, all these things are to survive in the environment and how it changes if the environment changes, okay? And then, of course, we're going to look at certain things like homologous structures and analogous structures. These are nice big words, right? Homologous and analogous structures. Right, so let's see what we have up for you. Okay, basic body plans. As we can see, uh, it's organs. As let me get there, the basic components of of different organs, how they change. Right, that is the whole part. Your, your your body plan is what the things look like and how they go around and and what do we find inside and what do we find outside. Now we're having a look at how the things on the outside is going to start modifying to get where it is. Right. First one I spoke, spoke to you about, if you can remember, is, hom I said homologous structure, right? This word here, homolog uh, homology, right? That one there is telling you a specific thing. That there is actually saying that the things that we're using, right, they all come from a similar, th a similar area. But area is not the right word. I'm trying to think of something nice. Like um, your hand. Just think, think about your hand. Everything looks like, like your hand, but we adapt it for different things. Like we adapt the, the bones or the hands of the bones for swimming, for flying, for digging, for running, all of that type of thing. But they're all doing different functions. Okay, So they've got the same structure, but different functions. Right? The other one is analogy. Okay? That means that they're all adapted for the same function, but they look completely different. Okay, now, that might jump you around a bit and make confuse you a little bit, but it's going to become obvious as we go along. So don't stress too much. Okay, if we go to the next one. Okay, here we go. Homologous structures. Now, those are some nice pictures. If I have a look at it, just by looking at it, for me, I can already see, right? We have a human, we have a horse, we have a bat, we have a bird, and we have, uh, let's see, swimming things. So let's say a dolphin, right? Now, there are the three structures. Now, you can see all these lines are confusing and going crazy. That, that, just forget about lines. It's not about the lines. Those lines are showing you specific things. Now, I want you to picture the human hand, right? So if I did this, there's the human hand. It's like, like that, and I'm bringing it up like, like that. You will get your thumb, 
and all your little fingers coming across, right? And if you remember, big, big names, your phalanges, right? Don't, don't forget, you've got your humerus here at the top, right? Your radius and ulnas, and of course, you get your carpals and met metacarpals. Those are the bones in the wrist and the hand, right? So all of those there are actually in every single one of these, every single one of them, okay? So they actually, if you look at them carefully, that you can actually say they come from the same place. Now, that's where Darwin, I don't know if you know who Darwin is. Now, Darwin, they normally say is there with, um, with evolution. Now, evolution is quite a cool thing. You must, you must actually go and look up evolution. Whether you're religious or not, doesn't matter. Evolution is quite cool seeing a pattern going along, right? They actually say, Darwin says, that they all come from a similar ancestor. Okay, now, listen to this. Ta. Yes, I'm here with you. Where do we come from? They say we adapted from a species of ape and okay. developed over time and time. And basically, depending on our climate and our conditions, we adapted certain skill sets and abilities. Ah, somebody's been studying. Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Never, boy, he's learned. Okay, <laughs> now, we don't <laughs> come from apes. Understand that I wasn't on all fours once upon a time running around. That is not me. Okay. I come from a similar ancestor. So if I had to extend this and explain to you what I mean, right? If I just took that, okay? Yeah is our similar ancestor, right? We come from the same ancestor. Okay, so that is us and that is them. Right, that is the apes, that is us. Similar ancestor. We don't come from them. That's wrong. That does not work. Forget about that. Do you get what I'm trying to say? We don't come from them. But what's nice, if I go back to what I was saying earlier, they come from a similar ancestor. In other words, they had the similar features. And those features, as we're going along, they change to, to be better in their environment. Okay, so they changed for swimming. They changed for flying. So did they. So did him. He did for running. And us, we needed to grasp things. Right? We needed to make sure that we can grab onto something. Okay? So that is a nice thing. Now, let's have a look at the lines. Okay? Here we go. Humerus. There's the humerus of all the different animals. Okay? Okay? If, if you have a look at it, uh, me, I can't see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go pink. I'm actually enjoying pink lately. You know, it's quite cool. Right? It's such so a manly color. <laughs> <laughs> it is, eh? <laughs> makes, makes you feel all warm and cozy inside. Anyway, <laughs> so you've got over here, if you look at it, there's all the humerus. So there's a humerus, there's a humerus, there's a humerus, there's one, and there's one. Okay? So, so far, can you understand where I'm coming from? The humerus, it's a top bone over here, the nice and hard bone, right? Nice strong bone. The humerus is there, right? Then we're going to go to the radius and ulna. There they are, two bones. Can you see how they, one's above, above the other? It's there for twisting, right? It's two bones. You can break your forearm by only breaking one bone, okay? So there they are. There's the two over there. You can see them color. It's in gray. Okay, this one, if you think about it carefully, they've lost one of their bones. It doesn't mean that they didn't have one. It just means that they've actually, they didn't need it anymore. And if they don't need it, why have it? It's very cool. If you look at this, there's the one, there's the other. Okay, <coughs> sorry. And then of course, here by us, if you have a look at it, they made funny lines. There's our two, right? Radius and ulna. So we've all got the same thing. There's a point that I'm trying to make here, so just bear with me, right? Next, next one, if you look at it, you get your carpals, which is over there, okay? These guys, if you look at it carefully, where's carpals coming along there? There's carpals, and there's carpals, okay? They're missing them. Go to the next one, have a look. They're over there, it's coming over there, and of course, ours is over there, okay? So the carpals are there. Some animals have them, some animals don't but they were there once upon a time, right? Then you get your metacarpals, which are the bigger bones, and they've, this one also doesn't have them. This one will have one or two over there. He doesn't have, okay? He's got this part here, and then we've got our carpals over there, our met metacarpals, sorry, and then you get your phalanges, which is right at the end. Now watch this carefully, okay? There is one, two, three, four, five. Cool, so he's got five, just like a human, there it is. One, two, three, four, five. Five carpals, uh, five, five phalanges, five phalanges. Okay, over here we have one problem. If you have a look here, 
One, two, three, four, five. All five are present. Okay. Look at the horse. How many does he have? There it is. It's got one. I'm going to tell you something nice about a horse uh, late, later on. And then, of course, the human, we have five. Okay. Now, everything is adapted for a specific function. Okay. Let me see what's next. And if it comes in with our story, you'll understand what I'm going to. Vert vertebra all have, it's c it comes from a similar place. It's called um, pentadactyl limbs. Okay. So if you look, there's the human limbs. Okay. There's, there's the human limbs. All of them come from the same ancestor. So look at it. Yeah, we have a bat. If you look at the bat, there's the five, one, two, three, four, and then the last one's up here. That la last one has actually got a hook. Okay, they've got the nice long spread out ones so that they can have this sheath between, the, b between each finger, right? If I can call them fingers. Each finger so that they can fly. Now, these little bones here, or the phalanges, actually are very, very light. The reason why they're light is the lighter it is, the easier it is to fly. Okay, so don't forget, it doesn't just adapt with the way it looks. It also adapts for how much it weighs, things like that. Remember, you don't want something very heavy when you've got to fly, okay? They adapted the long fingers so that, so that you can actually get this nice um, thing in between so that you can fly or push air away. And then the last fingers actually got a hook so they can climb on trees and hang on. Okay, So they don't always hang on upside down, as we've always been told. Right, huh? They always hang up on trees and things like that because you don't just get vampire bats, you get fruit, fruit bats and they've got to get up there. Okay, If we have a look at the dolphin, dolphin here as well, there he is and there's his five. You can count them, one, two, three, four, five. They're there to spread out and push water. It's there to steer yourself in water. It's there to actually move in water. Okay? So their limbs have actually made a fin. Okay? If you look at evolution, they actually say that the, golf, the, the, the dolphin used to be a land animal, and it used to come into the water. Same as with um, the whales. Right? Now, here's something interesting. I'm going to give out a question. Please see if you can send it. It's always nice to give it in. Why... Would a whale have a hip bone if it doesn't walk on water? Because hip bones are used for walking. See if you can answer that question. Send it to Ty, and let's see if we can get some clever people out there. Right? Then you've got your anteater. Now, if you look at this carefully, <coughs> sorry, if you look at the anteater, over here, his finger, this third finger over here, okay, it's nice and long. Okay, what do you think that's for? It's still got five fingers, okay? This finger, the third finger, is actually there to break open the, the, um, the ant's nest, right? To break it open and to get inside there. That is the point of this third finger. In the beginning, it was very small, right? And then it started to adapt to get nice and big to get in there, okay? I'll explain how adaption works just now, a nice way that I remember it. It's very cool, right? So you've got the third finger that gets nice and long and strong and solid, okay? Then we go to the next, next one, which is your mole. Now... Your mole goes under the ground. So if you ever go to places, you always see a little sand heap in the middle of nowhere. That is a mole, right? Now, a mole, his fingers or his whole little arm, his limb, has actually become short and, I can't call it fat, short and stumpy, right? Each bone is short and stumpy because he's got to go through the ground all the time. And the more he goes through the ground, the more his bones actually work. So you don't want to break them, okay? So just, just remember that. These ones have adapted small, short, stocky, right? Nice and strong bones, which is nice, okay? You get the horse. I'm going to leave the horse. I'm going to come back, back to the horse because I've got a nice picture about it or nice saying about it, okay? Let's go right to the top. We've got the monkeys, okay? Now, a monkey, they actually have much longer fingers. Same as us, much longer fingers. And this is the first time we hear about the thing called um, opposable thumbs. It means they're opposite to each other, right? They can grab. If you look at the, 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 the dolphin, it's flat like this. It doesn't need to grab anything. It can move everything out of the way, right? Um, the the, 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 the anteater doesn't need it to grab anything. It wants to move everything out of the way. Same with the mole, move everything out of the way. It's only the monkeys that have an opposable thumb. It's opposite and it works nicely so we can grab and grip. That is why they can climb trees. They actually, they, their phalanges are actually nice and long. And the longer they are, uh, the better it is because they're actually going around trees and they're grabbing and they're holding on nice and tight. That's why we can climb trees. But they can, like, yo, they fly through, through trees because they're nice and long and they can grab. And, of course, they've got a tail, which we ain't got. 
Can you imagine having a tail? That would be interesting. I have that. I've had that thought before. But hmm. Oh no, that'll <laughs> do. <laughs> when you're happy, it <laughs> wags. It goes. That'll be awesome. <laughs> 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 then we got the pig. Now, the pig is also quite quite interesting. If you remember what a pig foot actually looks like, right? It actually comes down, okay, and then you get a piece that comes out like that, and a piece that comes out like that, and it goes back up. Now, I'm a terrible drawer, but understand this. Can you see it's got two there, okay? On the back, it's got another two, much smaller, right at the back. Now, that's right in the back, okay? So the first two, okay, those adapted to walk on. They became the hooves, right? The other two became a lot shorter so that it's out of the way. Now, if you have a look at it, I don't know if you can see it. It's quite close and it's quite small, but try and see it, okay? You've got two, five, four, three. Now, four and three is where your hooves are, okay? Two and five became a lot shorter. What happened to one? It disappeared. Once upon a time it was there, now it's gone, okay? So one disappeared, three and four became the hooves that it walks on, and of course, two and five became shorter at the back. And if you go have a look at, if, if you go look at pig trotters or whatever it is, you can actually go see it. It's quite cool. Now, the horse. I love horses. What I'm going to do is before we go through the horse, I'm going to go for an ad break, and I will see you in a few seconds. Ta. All right. So, mindsetters, I hope you guys make sure that you get on the page and get chatting to us. I'm scanning through it right now, trying to find out if you guys have been posting. But mindsetters, make sure as I keep stressing. Talk to each other. If you guys find a mindset in trouble, help them out. But other than that, we're going to see you after this break. And welcome back, mindsetters. Hope you had a nice little break. You went to the bathroom. You went to got something to drink. You went to put your bags down. You went to just whatever you were doing now needs to stop because you need to pay attention, get your pens and pads out <laughs> and get ready to make notes. Before we continue, Luke, I actually have a question here from Yeah, Duncher. let's hear it. Um, I'm trying to wonder to find out the whale has a he well, he was answering your question, yeah. which is pretty good. I'm gonna be checking on other some of those other answers. Um he wanted to find out the whale has a hip bone because it supports its motion. Hmm. Now that sounds quite cool. And and you would think it actually works, but you won't believe this. The hip bone is actually attached to nothing. It's just floating in the middle of nowhere. That's Kay? very interesting. That is where they come with evolution. That's why they think evolution actually took place. Okay, is because our hip bone, the legs are joined to it, the top part is joined to it. The whale's hip bone, they think that it used to walk on land. And because it used to walk on land, if you walk, you need a hip bone. bone. If you swim, you don't. Okay, so that, this hip bone, it's a small part of the hip bone that is, that is left. It's just sitting there in the middle of nowhere. It's the same as our appendix. True. Our appendix is just flapping in the middle there. It's just waiting to burst. <laughs> I don't know if that's the best way to put it. It's just waiting there to burst. So all the gunk goes in there, and then it bursts. Hopefully, ours doesn't, so it pushes it all out. So I'm still lucky. I've got a good appendix. Mm, same My here. wife's on the other hand, uh-uh. It's history. It's out. Mm. <laughs> anyway, let's carry on. Now, I said to you I was going to do the horse, right? But wait. I want to go through this in a little bit more just to show you exactly what it looks like. And if you haven't seen moles, if you haven't seen bats, if you haven't seen monkeys or or anything like that. just want to go through it. I'm keeping the horse story for right at the end when you guys are all like starting to go, oh, it's becoming boring now again, right, Ty? Mm, so totally. let's leave the horse story for the end because you know me, I always like throwing a story in there and it's quite cool. Right, so if I have a look at it, <coughs> structure and adaptation for function, the mole. Remember I said, said to you the mole, okay? The mole's function is for digging, okay? There it is. It's limbs are short, fat, okay? As I said there, it's compact and it makes it nice and strong so it doesn't break very easily. Can you imagine all it does all day is those muscles that are actually in this area. You've got to remember that your bones, the muscles are joined to the bones. So if your muscles are nice and strong, okay, they're nice and strong. If your bone isn't strong enough to handle it, your muscles are either going to pull off the bone or it could break your bone. So the bone has got to be adapted for the muscle and the muscle's nice and strong. So... These animals, if you have a look at them, I've got a nice picture of it. <coughs> there we go. Look at him. He's blind. He cannot see. But look at the size of that hand. Wow. We've just gone to black, right? Look at the size of that hand, okay? That hand is almost the size of his head, okay? That makes sure that he can get through. Look how big those, those nails are. He's got to drag himself through that soil. So those bones have to be strong and hard and must be able to handle everything, okay? That is the mole. 
Very easy, very straightforward. The next one is the bat. Now remember I said, said you get all different types of bats. Okay? Bats have been there for a long time. Okay? Just let me throw out a question there. How do bats, uh, if I can put it, see? It's not really see, but how do they see? Send to Ty, let's see if you're paying attention. Right? So the bats, okay? remember I said, said to you, they're for flying. Okay, they're for flying, and they adapt, their, their limbs are long. Remember I said to you they're long. I'm going to show you a nice picture of it. They're nice and long. They're phalanges. They've got the skin in between so they can push their air, and it's very important that they are very light. Oh, it's changed color. They are very, very light. Okay, the lighter they are, the better. Even birds, if you have a look at these great big birds, their, their, their skeletal structures are very, very light, and because of them being light, they could fly. If they were too heavy, they won't, won't be able to, right? So if we have a look at it, the four limbs are thin, long, and very light. Now, there's the human. There's a human arm. I keep bringing up the human arm because we see our hand every day, okay? We know what our hand look, looks like. Now, we, um, telling, we're looking at everything else according to humans, okay? Because we believe we're the best, right? So you stay strong, okay? So if you have a look at it, there's the human arm, there's the bats. Now, look at it carefully. The colors are here for a reason. The colors are not, not there just, just to look pretty. If we have a look at it, there's the same color. Get the same colors together. You see them? Okay, there's the next one. Remember, it's only got one. We have two, the radius and ulna. Okay, and then we've got the hand. I'm just going to call it the hand, which is your carpals, your metacarpals, and your phalanges. There they are. One, two, three, four, five. There it is again. And there's one. There's two, there's three, there's four, and remember that hook for it to hold on, that is five. Okay, so if you have a look at it, that is nice. It's all sorted, it all looks good. Now, let's have a look at the bat, okay? I can see them, can you? Look here, there's the arm, okay? There it is, there's all the figures, okay? Now you can only see three, where's the others? There's got to be more here somewhere. It actually looks like veins. Have you no noticed? They're very, very, very thin. Okay, these things are thin. They light. They, they, they sorry. They're very light. They are long and they thin. The thinner they are, the better. And remember, this thing looks huge. I mean, look, look at the size of it. It's big, right? Uh-uh. These things are small little things. They're like little mice. They look like mice with wings, which is cool. My son calls it also a mouse with wings or a rat with wings, okay? It's a nice way to look at it. The ears and everything looks like a rodent with big wings, which is cool. Now, next one, we're gonna have a look at is the structure of the horse. Here we go. Now, the structure of the horse is to run fast. The reason why it has one leg is to run fast. Now, <coughs> adaptation, the humerus is short, the rest of the bones are long and strong. So what I've done is I've put it there, Okay, so you can actually see it. There's the human leg. Remember the humerus? You've got the kneecap. You've got the, the uh, tibia and fib fibia. And then you've got your tarsals and metatarsals. And of course, the exact same thing on the horse. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the horse. The horse, once upon a time, millions of years ago, was the size of a Jack Russell. Can you believe it? That's possible. I've heard about that. But the size of a Jack Russell, it, is got, it had seven toes seven toes okay it's in the same family they reckon it's the same family as the rhinoceros okay because they've got uneven toes okay now where the horse used to stay is in forest areas and if you're in the forest area the soil is nice and soft and it moves so what it actually does is it's got the seven toes so it's got a bigger surface area to stand on right so it used to stand and it used to walk in the forest areas what happens the forest areas start dying out so what happens is the, the limbs, oh, not, not, not the limbs, the phalanges actually start shrinking, okay? And the middle one, so the third toe, actually increases in size, becomes longer. The whole leg longer, uh, get, gets longer because now that it's not in the forest area, what actually happens is <coughs> the predators can start catching these things, okay? Now, these animals, oh, let, me, let me just show you what I mean by these animals, those gorgeous animals, right? Those ones, they needed to start getting away from all its predators, Okay, when it gets away from its predators, it's going to be safe. So what we need to do is we need to get this thing faster. First thing it does is we lengthen the animal's legs. 
The longer it goes, the better it is, okay? The faster it can run. If you look at all these top sprinters, they're all tall guys. It's never these short, short guys, right? Long, long limbs, right? They only have one toe. So they're actually running on their toe here at the bottom. Can you believe it? Their third toe. The other, others have disappeared, right? Their third toe they're running on. The reason why they do that is the less toes they have on the ground or the less of the horse that is actually touching the ground, the faster it becomes, okay? They've also adapted themselves to be able to be nice and stable, okay? They can adjust their weights quite nicely. And we started riding them because they were easy to ride. They were much more comfortable than any other animal and they can jump. So we do show jumping and dress sarging. I've done show jumping, it's cool, right? So dress sarging and we race them and we go crazy. So this animal we know started off as like a little Jack Russell and it got bigger and bigger and bigger. Started off with seven toes and it ended up with one, hey? Now that is cool. Hey, Ty, what do you think? No, definitely. Like, yeah, I actually had horses. Did you? Hmm. Yes. Now we see. We get to the good people here. We <laughs> love horses. Any answers for me yet on those questions? Yes, we've got a couple here. Takalani one says that the bat uses a technique of sonar to navigate ultrasound waves and that are sent out to reflect off objects and around the animal. Oh, but that's the best answer I have ever heard. That was br If you can answer in a test like that, I'm hoping that that person get blown away and just marks everything else right because that was perfect. What actually happens is a bat sends a signal out, okay, and that signal hits against something else and comes back and they can find where that object is or how the object's moving or anything like that. As it hits and comes back, they can judge the distance. So they see by sound, which is cool. You've also got all your other animals like your whales and all of that, they also do it, which is quite cool. Right, so... Horses. <coughs> the next one, the seal. We all know what a seal is? Yes. Okay, a seal is not, not the stuff that you put between pipes to stop the water from getting through. Or not that singer. seal. Hey? Or the singer. Or the singer. Or, <laughs> si ah, so or the singer. Not the singer. This is an animal. Now, these are the swimmers. Remember, they don't have opposable thumbs. Their fingers are spread out nice, nicely, right? They've got a thick layer between each phalange so that it can actually move and steer through water, right? Their bones are short and modified into a flipper, as I said. <coughs> short, because you don't want these long flippers. Well, you get your long flippers for um, your, what those big animals called? Dolphins, whales. whales. <coughs> those brothers, yes. right? The, dolf the, the dolphins, the whales, whales, right? They've got these long flippers, but they've also got these long bodies, and it's got to be in proportion. The bigger the flipper, the more it pushes water out, or the more it pushes water so it can go through the air. Oh, the air. <laughs> go through the water. Now, the bigger the flipper, the more it has to put, the more water it pushes. So if you've got a small animal like a dolphin, can you imagine a dolphin having these long flippers? It might be able to push the water, but it needs the muscles to actually move it. So just remember that. Everything's got to be in proportion. Otherwise, it's never going to work. Okay. Everything is in proportion. Otherwise, we're not going anywhere. Now, if I have a look at it, there's a nice picture. Seals are beautiful. They are stunning. When they're born, they are these white fluffy balls. Mm. Hey? They are so furry. cool. Sorry? Like fluffy, furry kind of that's balls. That's mm. it. Fluffy and furry. And that, that's a problem. It's two furries, very bad at times. Two furries, very bad. If we have a look at it. Here we go again. <coughs> there it is. The humerus. Right? There you get... Your radius and ulna, right? And then you get your phalanges. Okay, nice and spread out. If you see it, the, you've actually got the little things coming out, the nails, right? So it can claw and grab and everything like, like that. Okay, it is adapted for swimming. If you can see them, there it is. It's short and stumpy and it can move in water. Yes, they do use them for walking around, but it's short and stumpy. Cool. Next one. Monkeys, monkeys. Now, my, my little boy is my little monkey. I always say he's my little monkey because he can hold on for dear life. Only he would know how he does it. <laughs> Hangs on me all the time. He's beautiful. Now, monkeys, remember I said, said to you, they've got opposable thumbs. So their thumb is opposite of everything else so they can grab, okay? Let's have a look. For climbing trees, it's most important is to climb trees, right? The bones are elongated, thin and light. We have light things. Our phalanges, as it says, are for gripping branches. Now, let's have a look at these things, okay? 
Look at the size of those hands. Hey? Like, I can't do that. That's huge. Those phalanges are there. Look at that. It is huge. Now, the reason for that is to go right around a branch and to hold on nice and strong. Remember, the more area they have, the more muscles they have in that. Okay? And never think that your monkeys or your apes are not clever. They are actually very, very clever. Okay? They start using tools. They look for your, your, your chimpanzees actually stick straws into ant holes so that it can get some protein and meat. Right? They are very, very, very clever. Okay? The tail is there for balance and for use, for, for, for use, but mostly, if you look at the hands, without these hands, they, they're in trouble. So poachers and that that go and try and get hold of their hands and stick these traps up and they land on them, if they lose a limb, that's it. They are going to die. So the limbs are very, very, very important because without those long fingers, they aren't climbing any trees. They can't climb trees. They can't get away from predators. And the predators that are in the trees with them, if they don't have long fingers, they cannot move through the trees fast enough to get away from them. Okay, so they're very, very, very important. Very important. Sorry, I like emphasizing certain things. Okay, homologous structures. Can you remember what they are? Homologous structures, they have the same roundabout structure, okay, roundabout. They don't have to have identical. They must have come from a common ancestor, okay? So they've got the radius. They might have the ulna or they might have the uh, radius, you know? So, uh, uh, sorry, the humerus. Either have the radius or the ulna. Or they just have part of the hand, okay? They'll be maybe missing two or three phalanges, but they've got similar structures, Okay? The only difference is they are used for different functions, okay? Remember, functions, for example, here we go. I like bringing pictures up because me, I'm a boy. And boys, they, they do pictures, eh? Yeah, we're not too good with words all the time. Too many words, we start getting distracted and exactly. bored. And exactly, exactly. <laughs> we're ladies. They are brilliant with the words. They are. My, my wife's brilliant with the words. I'm brilliant with the pictures. That's why we always lose in fights. Always. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying a word because I'll get into trouble. <laughs> now, if you have a look at it, I said up there, Darwin believes that the structures have a common evolutionary or, uh, origin. In other words, they come from the same place. Always remember that. They come from the same ancestor. Ancestor is very important. They can look quite different but they have different uh, they can look quite similar they can look a bit different as long as they have round about the same things they're there to do different functions very important different functions now there we go we've got a penguin penguin also does it there it is there's the bones there they are okay remember humerus radius ulna Metacarpal, uh, carpals, met metacarpals, phalan ph your phalanges. Let's have a look at this. Your alligator, there it is as well. Okay, there they are. Now, think about it. Swimming, okay. Walking and swimming, there's its, its uh, little parts of between its fingers to actually swim. Okay, if we have a look, here's the bat flying. Okay, cool, flying. And here, the human for grabbing. Okay, so one more time. Swimming only, okay? This thing is useless out of water, a penguin, okay? It's a bird, but it's a bird that swims, simple. Alligator, you won't believe it, but that thing most probably will run faster than you on land, an alligator. It is quick. It's very quick, right? So it can run on those and it can swim. You've got your bat that flies, and then you've got the human or the, the primates, which can actually grab things. Now, all of these things are used for different functions, as I was saying. Different functions, but from a similar ancestor. Very, 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 very important. As you can see, I've got all the colors. Hopefully, Ty's putting this on the, on the net for us so that well, we can Working we can on get it right it. now, just trying to get those pictures up and going. So Ooh, yeah. That's going to be nice. Hopefully, you get those pictures and, and keep it going. Keep downloading these things and, and have a look at them because they can just make it easier and better and better. Right. Let's see. Homologous structures, okay, fundamental structures, the structure is the same, I know I'm repeating myself, but it's very, very, very important, very important, okay, the position and the development, how it does it, what it does, it might change slightly, but it works, okay, it helps with that animal, okay, and difference in, 
They may not necessarily perform the same function, okay? But all in all, it's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. If I could take a bat and short, shorten their fingers, they could have arms li like ours, okay? Very important. They look the same, okay? But different functions, okay? Homologous structures. Homo, meaning the same. Okay, always remember, homo, the same. Every time we talk in biology about homo, it means it's the same thing. Okay, I want you to think about that. Go get, get something to drink, and I'll see you in a couple of seconds. All right, so mindset is, as you heard from Lou, make sure you don't disappear, though. Make sure you come back. That's the whole point. Make sure you come back ready with your pens and pads out and ready to make notes. But we'll see you after this break. And welcome back, Mindsetters. I hope you had a nice little break there. You went to do whatever you had to do. You spoke to mom, you spoke to dad, you were on the phone, you got off the phone. Now you're paying attention, you're ready, and you've got your notes out. Make sure that you have your pens and make sure that you get on the page and get chatting to us. If you have any questions, if you have any ideas, if you have any diagrams you'd like to share, make sure you just feel free to post it up on the page because it is for you guys. Think of it as like a backup study notes helper. But on that note, this is where I hand over to Mr. Lou. Lou, take it away. Cool. Hopefully you're back. Now, what I've done is, I just want to go over the slide. We haven't seen it yet, but it goes over the same thing. You must remember with modification, okay, it's actually easy. It's very easy. But they ask you the simple things like homologous, analogous. They ask you the big names. Where's the radius? Where's the ulna? What does this one do? Why is that one adapted for that? That's the most important things, right? Now, here we go. If we look at homologous structures, it shows us evolution. Okay, it also tells us that there was a common ancestor, okay, and you're going to come to me, it's through adaptive radiation. Now, that does not mean Spider-Man and spiders biting you and you start shooting out webs. And, no, it's not that. <laughs> okay, let me tell you what adaption actually is. Okay, now, I explained it to you with a horse, okay, but it's very, very important to get to the point where adaption is making life easier for yourself. Okay, so let's say these, these horse, right? They were still little Jack, Jack Russells, okay? The ones that had, <coughs> because everybody's different. If you look at us, some ha our hands are bigger, some of the hands are smaller, some pinkies are bigger, some pinkies are smaller, right? All of those things. If we had a look at that, if we were running on all fours, right? If the pinky had, was, was in the way and we had to run very, very fast, okay? What happens is the pinky gets in the way, it's grabbing on the ground, and everybody that has a short, shorter pinky can run that much faster. And because they run that much faster, okay, they get away from the predators. The guys with a pinky are getting eaten, okay? And once they get eaten, that just leaves me. Right? And everybody that had a short pinky, or a little bit short, but slightly, and you must, must remember this happens over millions of years, right? the short, shorter pinky, everybody with a short pinky, they start breeding, okay? and their children come out with that pinky just even that much short, shorter than mom and dad, and they survive even better than what my generation did. And after a while, as we're doing that, the pinky gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter until there's nothing left. Okay, so that is how adaptation takes place. Okay, if we had a look at it, there was a nice question the one year in the grade 12. Ah, here we go, grade 12 question paper. It's all about uh, the thorns on uh, a, um, a cactus, right? They never used to have thorns, and now all of a sudden they have thorns. The reason they have thorns is because they adapted okay? they've adapted because these animals started eating them all the time. So now they put thorns on to protect themselves. Okay, so the ones who had thorns survived, the ones without thorns didn't. There we go. There's a quick adaption for grade 12. Okay, but you need, need to know that anyway because they can ask you that. Okay, what does adaption mean? How do we adapt? Very important. Now, if I go back to the next one, okay, analogous. We haven't gone through analogous at all yet. Okay, analogous is quite cool. This is what we see every day. You walk outside and you see it all the time. Analogous means it's a different ancestor, but does the same function. So if you look at it, you've got your moths, you've got your birds, you've got your bats, you've got your, your, um, all your insects. So you've got the, the, the bee. You know? So all of these things, they all do what? They all fly. So if we have a look at it, analogous means they have the same function, right? But 
different, uh, what are they called, structures. Different structures. So let's see. The bat, look at it. It's all, there's all the what's names. All the blue, forget about the blue, okay? All I'm talking about is, see it's got the five fingers. There's its fingers. And it's got this leathery between, le leathery parts. Wait, I should use a pen. It's so much easier. They've got this part, right? There it is. But <coughs> they've got this leathery, this piece, leathery part between each of them. And that leathery part actually grabs air and moves it up and down, right? It moves in the air to use it, right? We go to a bird, right? It's also got the same as this. Exactly the same structure there, exactly the same structure, might have changed, but look here, now it's got feathers, okay, <coughs> feathers are light, they push air the exact same way, okay, it's just a different mechanism of flying, okay, different mechanism of flying, very important, okay, if you have a look at this one, can you tell me what that is, hmm, it's quite difficult to see what that is. Anybody know? This here? Let's go to this one. <coughs> oh, this, this, this one first. Okay? This one is your moth. Your moth, it's joined over here. These are most, mostly veins. It's got a very, very thin epidermal tissue. Okay? That's why they can break very, very easily. Okay? They break very easily. And then you've got this structure. Okay? It is also, if you look at it, there's the bones running across and up and down also adapted for flying. Okay, all of these are just different ways to fly. Very important. Now, if I have a look, quick, quick summary of it. Just of this, and then I'm gonna tell you about some couple of things that I don't have on you, but I thought I'd just throw it in for, for, the, for the fun of it. Okay, let's have a look at the summaries here. Okay, homologous or homolog, homol Homologous, that's the real way of saying it. Homologous is the top one. So you've got the hand, you've got the bird, you've got um, the porpoise, which is a nice one, and you've got the elephant. All of them, st same structure, different function. Okay? So all of these have a different function, uh, a, a different function, but the structure is the same. Okay? Analogous, okay? That means it does the same function but it has a different structure. Okay, so we've got feathers, and we've got a thin epidermal layer that actually moves there. Okay, so that is a very nice, nice diagram. Okay, if we carry on. Now, <coughs> before I get to any further, what I want to talk about, okay, is we don't just have this or all of these structures in vertebra, okay? We also have them in insects. It was very nice. I didn't think I would get to this. So I'm going to try and get to it as quick as I can so that you can understand it. Now, your insects, okay, if you have a look, look at your insects, they've got the mouth parts. Now, each mouth part actually changes, okay, to sort it to, to do a function. So if you look at the grasshopper, right, in the grasshopper, you get your maxilla, you get your mandible, you get your libia and all of those. Those parts are too bite food. So you get your libya and your maxilla, which actually hold food, and then you get your mandible that actually cuts the food and breaks it up for it to swallow, right? Now, from that, that was the basic structure. Now, these are homologous, okay? Homologous structures. So you get your homologous structures where they actually, they adapt. So then you get the mosquito that the proboscis starts coming out and it can stick into you. Okay? Their mouth parts actually changed. Even though it's still got the maxilla and the libia and the, um, what's it, the hypo, um, I'll think of the name now. But the top of the mouth, the top palate, right? They come out and they actually suck out the blood. Then you get your, um, your butterflies, beautiful butterflies, right? They've got the proboscis that actually turns up and they go get your, your, um, the bottom of your flower, you know, the, the ne nectar and all of that. They suck up that. All of this stuff comes from the exact same place, right? They start off the same, the, 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 the same structure, but they change, right? They change to adapt to their, f their own simple function. Okay, so that is your insects. Do you know that plants actually also do it? If you have a look at your plants, right, each plant wants to make sure that their pollen gets sent to the exact same plant, 
right? If they have the exact same plant, they can't interbreed between different species. So what they've done, plants are very, uh, they're actually very clever. You might not think it, right? But they're actually very, very clever. If you get this plant, it only wants to mate with the same type of species as is, even though it can mate with any of the others, but it doesn't want to. The yellow one wants to mate with the yellow one. Just put it like that. It does, doesn't want to mate with the blue one, right? Now, I'm just using colors instead of their big names, right? So what actually happens is the yellow one, you need a bumblebee, right? A huge bumblebee. Now, a bumblebee is actually a big bee, okay? The bumblebee will land on this flower, and the minute it lands, it actually opens a door because the bumblebee is so heavy. So it opens a door. The bumblebee can go inside. It can take all its nectar, right, and it will fly away. Once it's got it, as it goes in there, the pollen rubs on its back and on its feet and everywhere like that, and then it leaves. And if it goes and lands on another yellow flower, the thing pops open and this bumblebee goes in. Now, if a bee lands on there, a normal bee, an African bee, that little latch won't open. The bee is not heavy enough. Okay? So if it's not heavy enough, that is not going to pop open. So then the butterfly, oh, this, this bee will leave. Okay? Now, the bumble, but on the blue flowers, this African, they land on it and they fit perfectly. The stem is nice and, 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 and soft. So the bumblebee lands on there and it can handle the, the, the normal bee. Right? The minute a bumblebee lands on the blue flower, the, the, the flower just breaks off or it, or it disintegrates. Oh, not, not, not just disintegrates or it bends and the bumblebee can't get in there. Okay? That is the way flowers change so that they don't interbreed, which is quite cool. They also make sure that they do it at different stages of the year so that they don't interbreed. That's another one that looks so good. Also, they change the type of flower. So they can make the flower nice and nice and long. And if it's long, then you get the animals with a long beak. So you get your sunflowers and all of those guys. They go in and they get the ne nectar, right? If they go in and get the ne nectar, the pollen will land on, on, their, um, on their beaks and that. And they'll go to the next flower and they'll pollinate it li like that, right? So that is how flowers do it, okay? Now... Homologous, structs, homologous structures, okay, they all have the same. So they've got all their different petals and they've got the, the, the parts that attract the animals and they've got the, um, what's that stuff called, the nectar and the pollen. They've all got the same type of thing, okay, but some are for different functions. Their pollen goes for different functions. So you've got the pollen that goes with wind. Now they're going to have big fluffy things to go in the wind. Okay, you're going to have the ones that stick to animals. You've got the ones that have to go with water, right? And they're going to have flagella so it can move in the water. So it happens with every single thing that we have, okay? These things will actually adapt to survive in its environment, okay? Hopefully that helps you. Ta. Yes. Do we have any questions for today? Yes, we actually have a couple. More of these questions were more just clearing up. So we That's might have perfect. to backtrack a little, but I hope That's you don't mind That's 100%. That. That's why we are. Okay. Yeah. So basically, first off, um, we have a question uh, which comes in by from Zuvia Erasmus, who's a regular on the page. Mm, nice. um, so if we wanted to find out um, what, is, what is the exact function of phalanges? Of phalanges? Mm. Okay. Your phalanges are what you actually grab with. Okay. If we look at us. Okay, remember that the phalanges, when it comes to bats, the reason that the, phalan the, the phalanges are there, it's a couple of bones away from each other, so you can actually get a nice, if you look at the bat, they get that film, film between it, and if you open your phalanges, it's going to push more air, it makes more surface area. Okay, now, if you have a look at, you can't say, yeah, you can, if you look at good swimmers, they've always got big feet, right? They've got big feet, it's like flippers. Right? A big feet in there, it can move in the water quite nicely. If you look at, look, look at your hand itself, you can actually see the little piece in here between your phalanges. That's, that piece there is what extends to the, for, for the bat all the way to the tip of the phalanges. And if they're closed like that, they can't do anything. If you open it, see it pops out nice, nicely. That's why when you swim, you're swimming nicely. These things open up everything or they fly, they open it up. It gives it space so that these little leathery parts can actually move water or move air or anything like that. The phalanges are there to open up and to create big surface area for some animals. It's there to hold on for others, as we find out with a monkey. Okay, that is, It's there for digging. When we come with a mole, it goes in. It, it's not just a certain part. When we get to the horse, remember with the horse, it used to walk on soft ground, so it opens up so that it doesn't sink into the ground. The minute it starts going into the grassland, those things are not working anymore, so it 
makes it into one. That's why it has one foot. Well, one, one toe that it runs on, which is its hoof. I hope that made it very clear. Hey, Tom? Yeah. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is now is what we've got a lot more questions still coming in. So we are then cool. also wanted to find out, um, basically, <coughs> do you ba have baboons ad adapted the same way as monkeys, basically? That's what she wanted to find, well, they wanted to find out. You know what? Uh, we, can, we can always have a look at this. Adaptation is very strange, okay? Um, <coughs> you adapt to your environment to make things nice and fun and, and to, to, to survive. So, for example, if I had to take um, why, I don't know if this is the white way to do it. I always do it, do it with my boys because they always ask me, black and white people, right? Blacks, they come from Africa. It's hot. It's solid. Their skin is adapted for the hard sun, right? They've got dark eyes so that they can use their eyes. They can adapt the sun. If you look at the white people, they come from the areas where it's very cold, so, the, so where they've got the ice, okay? The ice is there. They don't need the dark skin. And if you have a look at it, us as South, South Africans, okay, our skin is darker than what those people come from overseas because we're used to the sun. Our skin is adapted. Okay, so we've adapted to other white people, right, because of what we used, used to, okay? If you have a look at our eyes, my eyes are green, and the reason my eyes are green, what the real reason for having green eyes is, is that if you're in the snow, okay, it bounces off and into your eyes, the, 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 the sun. The sun rays bounce off and into your eyes, it's protection, right? Where the dark eyes, they don't need that protection off the light. That's why you can get such bad eyes at times. Depends on the darkness of your eyes, how bad of a reflection that you can take. Okay, so I know that you asked about monkeys and baboons and all of that, but you must understand that the, it's environment that changes an animal to what it does. Okay, so if there's more trees, if it's in a huge forest, they're going to be more type of an animal that's always in trees. Okay, and if it's on the floor, they, they'll run around. Okay, so hopefully that helps you. But anyway, ta. All right, so mindset is on that note. Thank you for joining us. And this is where I sign off and say cheers and see you next time.